Good day. That's an Australian expression. Actually, I was born in England, but I've been in Australia for 45 years, and I, I guess I'll probably stay now. This is my wife, Anne. Ten years ago, uh, Anne had a stroke. I found her early in the morning, clinging to the doorpost of the bathroom. She wasn't responsive. She couldn't stand. She couldn't talk. I didn't know what was wrong. I managed to lift her and put her on the bed. And uh, then I phoned an ambulance. Two paramedics arrived very, very quickly and very quickly diagnosed that she'd had a major stroke and took her to Nambour Hospital. I, uh, I got to the hospital about half an hour after Anne, together with my daughter. By that time, Anne had already had an MRI scan. They'd called in two specialists, two very able doctors, and uh, we have a high regard for both of them. And uh, they told me that Anne would not live for more than 12 hours. She could die at any time. She's had a massive stroke. Uh, part of the brain has already been destroyed and they've been unable to remove the blockage. We uh, had phoned out the rest of our family and they travelled from Canberra and Brisbane and uh, Sydney and uh, our daughter locally from Wombai throughout the day arrived at the hospital. And uh, the doctor showed me a picture of the scan showing that nearly 30% of the brain had already been destroyed. And that was the part of the brain that looks after the function of the organs. And one cannot survive if those organs are not working. 30% of the brain had been destroyed and the blockage was still there. And uh, he also then showed me another suggested t uh, picture, which says that within a few hours, because the blockage is still there, over 50% of the brain will be destroyed. He uh, said there is no point in connecting Anne to life support because there is no chance of survival. And to use his words, you'll be sentencing her to hell because she said she's in immense pain and there's no chance of survival. I uh, said to the doctors, we weren't anticipating this situation but we had spoken before to say that we didn't really want to be kept alive artificially. I said, Anne is prepared to die. She knows Jesus as her Lord. And uh, he was very courteous, but I could see that uh, he didn't think that very important. But to us, it is indeed most important. At the uh, end of 12 hours, Anne was still alive. They made provision for her to stay in a in a general ward and uh, they provided an armchair for me to stay with her the night. In the morning she was still alive and uh, again we saw the same doctors, they took another scan and I asked if it was as bad as they'd predicted and they said it was worse. And they cannot understand why Anne is alive but they're sure it's probably only an hour or so and she'd pass away. Well we'd notified many people and word quickly got around through in, throughout Australia, through uh, Canada and uh, New Zealand and England where we came from. And uh, the local Gideons had organised a special prayer meeting starting at 7 o'clock every morning. It continued for two weeks, was well attended and the one topic of prayer was for Anne. God honours faith. Anne was still alive after three days. No life support. The doctors said they don't know what to recommend. They can't explain why she's alive. I said, well, let's connect her up to the life support. They willingly did so. Put tubes down her nose, uh, things into her veins, and uh, put her on an ECG. And, uh, well, to cut a long story short, that was... 10 years ago, Anne is still alive today. There is very, very much prayer. God honours faith, God honours prayer. And uh, Anne is here. Now, what has she done in the last 10 years? Well, we belong to the Gideons. 
She's probably given away, we haven't actually counted them, but probably 2,000 Bibles in that 10 years. And uh, there have been many blessings, many results, many things that have encouraged us. Aunt man, Anne gave a Bible as we were travelling to a man in a park, a man and his wife. The man uh, was going to refuse to take the Bible, but uh, he took it, changed his mind. About 18 months later, or maybe less than that, a friend of ours came across a man in Winton, nowhere near where we uh, had given him the Bible, and uh, our friend offered him a Bible. He said, oh, I've got one. And he pulled from his back pocket the Bible that Anne had given him. He said, that's how I came to know the Lord Jesus. He said, a lady from Caloundra in a wheelchair gave me a Bible. God has used this problem that Anne has to his glory and honour and for the blessing of many, many people. There's uh, somebody I knew. He was desperate. He wasn't a Christian. He was in Beachy Head in England on the top of the cliff. He was going to do what many, many people, alas, have done. Jump and commit suicide. The local drunk was on the cliff top at the same time. He certainly wasn't a Christian. In fact, he couldn't read or write. But he cried out in his drunken state, have hope in God. And our, the man we subsequently got to know didn't commit suicide. He's now with the Lord. He has um, he had three children. They had children, grandchildren, and all of them came to know the Lord. God will use whoever he chooses, a drunkard on the cliff top. God is making known his love. And my wife, sitting beside me, was unable to speak. The hospital said after nearly six months in hospital, she can't stay here any longer. She'll be a vegetable. She'll never be able to speak, never be able to swallow, never be able to walk. And uh, Anne, who hadn't spoken a single word in six months because she wasn't able to do so, spoke for the first time. Having heard she was going to be a vegetable and a no-hoper, she said, well, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. What a God we have. God continues to use us and we're pleased to do his will, to do his work. Why did she survive? Well, we don't know. God is faithful. Around the world, people prayed. God answers prayer. God is inviting you to pray. Why don't you take the opportunity? Thank you for listening to us. Anne, who can now speak, will also say thank you. Thank you. We remember the psalm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. We've passed through the valley of death. We're now facing eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. We hope to see you in that day. Thank you, Lord. We're grateful for, to you for your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Amen.